for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Matt Money Shot. Sniff out the man. She's as always got another defensive scheme video for you guys today. So let's go and let's get into the video. Before I do that, if you guys want to see more videos like this, do me a favor, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. Other than that, let's go and let's get right into the plays. The formation itself is the even 6-1 out of the 4-3. There's the Sam Will Blitz. Then you have the cover four quarters. You can see how much I mix them. I don't use one play more than the other. These two are meant to be used together. Cover two is a lot better this year. So I started running cover two, and obviously you can see there's a huge huge difference in average. The only thing I forgot to mention is before you uh, pick the play, make sure that you hit Y slash triangle, then you're going to want to substitute um, your fastest linebackers at these outside spots. Obviously you want speed everywhere, but you're going to want to make sure that you have your fastest linebackers at the two edge spots because they're going to get the majority of the pressure and you're also going to be using one of them. So let's go ahead and let's pick that play. The Sam Will Blitz. And before I get into the video, as always, I just want to let you guys know this video is brought to you by my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com. If you guys want to get coins for your mutt team and you want to support my channel at the same time, check them out. Link in the description below and you discount code MONEY to get 3% off. So as far as the setup for this play goes, it really doesn't take a lot. All I'm going to do is hit the D-pad to the left and then down, which is going to pinch my defensive line, then D-pad to the left and up to slant them outside. Then I'm going to blitz all my linebackers, or I can just manually blitz Robert since I'm on him. Uh, and the last step would be to spread your linebackers, which this last step you don't necessarily have to do, but it's something that you can do. You can see they get out much further. It's gonna help with run defense. It's gonna help get them off the edge. The last step, I typically like to bring this guy in here and basically just guess pass. Just bring this guy in, hug him right up against his defensive end because this is going to shift the defensive line the way that that outside linebacker on the other side gets off free, which is what I want. So I'm gonna basically you know, drop back right into these receivers, try to take away any drags, any uh, short routes because typically that's what people are gonna have to do because of the pressure. Or if the running back goes down a flat, I have to follow him. So those are pretty much gonna be the only routes you're gonna see against a defense like this because the pressure is so quick. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Like I said, I just have to make sure that I get out on this flat. And like I said, you I mean, you're going to give up things like that. That's a five yard out. That's why you have to use the other play as well. But ultimately, this is going to be, um, you know, pretty good defense. That's nothing. There's not a lot of defense, not man coverage that's going to beat that five yard out. So that's just going to happen. So it's going to do this one more time. Like I said, I'm going to play like this when we don't have a shotgun and we don't have one player um, going in any, you know, we don't have a, a formation that's giving away where the plays might possibly go. I'm just going to bring Roe down and user him. And once again, if the running back, uh, you know, Whoever's using the running back basically would be the read on this play. And if the running back um, gets off, then you can see right there. I mean, that's, you know, a formation like that, there's a lot of blocking. It's not necessarily going to scream in. I'm typically going to get these type of screamers uh, when you uh, basically, you know, see like a, like a shotgun like this. This is really a good shotgun defense, even though it doesn't seem like it. So once again, we're going to do the exact same setup. We want this guy coming opposite the running back. So we're going to bring this guy in and we're going to basically use him the second the play starts. It's really that simple. Hopefully we get a good look here that I can get some pressure because this is a very high pressure package defense. You can see we're having very tight coverage as he knocks the ball out there. Um, not quite getting the pressure that we're expecting yet. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to, you know, like I said, you want to just make sure that the, uh, the, the the guy coming off the running back, the opposite running back side, that's the most important part. So let's go ahead and let's, like I said, we got to take away his running back. You can see we get the free rusher. We're just the airtight coverage. You know, I mean, that's the thing is <laughs> we're getting... We're getting airtight coverage, even though we're not necessarily getting a bunch of sacks. I'm going to probably have to choose a gun formation here in a minute if I don't get a sack on this next play. So let's go and let's do it. Like I said, I'm going to, even though this is, I'm going to take the chances at the blitz because I'm really trying to get some sacks here. So we're going to set this up like the blitz, even though I could also run it like the run defense. You can see, like I said, the run defense is stout. There's really not going to be any lanes, especially if it's a draw like that. So we were going to back out. We're going to pick some random guns because I really find that this works best against gun plays. So random gun, like I said, the empty is the only issue. And we're going to basically set up the same way. Like I said, this is you want to walk these guys down. You don't want to press. You just want to walk them down. The outside guys are fine. I'm not worried about them. But it's the inside guys that uh, usually get beat or that your opponent is typically looking at anyway. So like I said, bringing this guy in, we're just going to immediately drop back. You can see we get the free rusher. He's going to have to get it out quick. He just gets a little five-yard dink and dunk. Like I said, this here, you, 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 these cornerbacks here, they do a fine job. 
There we go. Finally got that guy to come in. I don't know why the defense wasn't coming in. The cornerbacks do a, do, a, do a fine job on the outside. It's the inside ones you got to worry about. You can guess underneath if you really want to try to take away short stuff too. It does have some effect when it comes to man. Let's see right here. We had a we had the sack. We had a, a you know the running back was blocking. And if you look at all the the receivers once the uh, the sack happens, once you get the sack animation, nobody's open. I mean, you, you would have to throw the ball probably right around here, and then even then, the accuracy wouldn't be there. But it's so fast. Everybody's about five yards down the field, and nobody has any separation. So like this, this is like I was saying here. This is the only uh, formation where you don't want to run this, but you can still run and have success. I would say the cut for quarters, you can't really run and have success. But this play here, you can run this and have success. I'm going to bring my guys down um, over their assignments again, although I messed this guy up. I don't know how I did that. But you're going to do the exact same thing. You're going to just basically come in with either one of these guys doesn't really matter because whoever you come in with the other guy is going to get off your opponent will start to recognize that over time they will start to do that i've had opponents they'll basically just try to sprint to the opposite direction immediately and run crossers and stuff like that that's typically what you're going to see so just be aware of that but since my faster guys on the other side anyway we're just going to bring this guy over and we're going to get it off the uh off the strong side although realistically once again you know i want to go short side here so it might make more sense to do this because i don't necessarily want if i leave him out here he might get bumped off by the tight end. I want an instant sprint straight to the quarterback. So I'm going to guess pass to get that. And now we're going to go ahead. We're just going to come in real quick, close to the defensive end again. He said, plus this left tackle. Oh, we got a screenplay. Now that's a good call for that. <laughs> but you can see it's still didn't get anything. Man coverage stops screenplays really well. Let's do this once more. Like I said, this here, this is more the look that I want. And I'm going to basically come in with this guy. Hey, whoever's over the running back, whoever's in front of the running back is typically the one that you want to do this with. Uh, because we, we want the, the running back to have a hard time. If he's going to go to a pass block, we want to have him a hard time. As you can see right there, he's getting sacked again by two guys this time. And the running back was on a pass block, but he had no idea what to do. So let's watch the replay. Like I said, this is the type of crazy pressure you're going to get. The running back, like I said, he was on a block. But he stayed in the middle and took out the linebacker. And then for whatever reason, we had two guys getting off. Uh, which almost it looks like a stunt, the way this play plays out. But um, this is the guy that I expect to get off every time. Ever. Anyway, I don't really care about the rest. But you can see he just gets a straight sprint in. The running back, that's one of the reasons I like blitzing the middle linebackers. A lot of times the running back will wait for that A gap. And then you can see this guy is just getting a straight sprint. we got a 90 speed linebacker just spring straight to the QB. Now, once again, for him to get the ball off, who's open? Who's open in this scenario? There's nobody open. He could maybe throw that outside route. But once again, the accuracy is going to be trash. So the next play is going to be the cover for quarters. Like I said, this is probably my favorite run defense, but it's also a very good pass defense. I get a lot of takeaways with this as well. So the setup for this is much more involved, but you don't have to have run any setup at all. That's one of the things that I like about this defense. If I wanted to run a very vanilla base defense, uh, I can just do this. It's basically pinch my defensive line, slant them outside, just like the previous play. Uh, and that'll give me some good pressure. I mean, it's not a great defense when it comes to, um, you know, cover four is one of the better pass defenses, but I'd rather get the pressure. So what I could do here, once again, you want to walk these safeties down at the very least, get them in front of their assignments and get them in a position where they can stop the run because they will do a good job of that. So like I said, if I have somebody running the ball a lot, I could easily do this. And you can see not a lot to uh, run, not inside or outside. He's pretty much there to take it away. That was the safety. That's the, the key. That's the secret to cover four run defense is these safeties. As long as you don't guess pass, which I do like 90% of the time, uh, but I don't want to run this defense. If I don't guess pass, look how they play like linebackers and just fill robotically towards the ball. I mean, they basically are in sync. They're in unison here. They basically just walk down to the hole. He basically was in a position where he's like, look, buddy, you can stretch it outside, get nothing, or you can basically stick it inside and get nothing. And that's exactly what happens. So that's why cover four in pretty much any formation is one of the best run defenses. It's also one of the better pass defenses as well. Yeah, really easy setup. If you do this, uh, if you practice it a little bit, you should have no issues with that at all. I'm going to play underneath too because the pressure is going to get in. So I'm going to play underneath. They really play, look, see, flat route. You play underneath, takes it away. Real simple. But one of the things I like, I mean, I really like this for run defense, but I also like the coverage. I really find like the coverage you get from these uh, from cover fours and deep zones are some of the best zone coverages in the game. And then obviously um, the, the safeties play better in this coverage. I'm not sure it's necessarily the cornerbacks play better. I think in man, the cornerbacks probably play better. But in, as far as zone coverages go, 
The, the safeties play the best in the deep zone based off the fact that they play the run and stuff like that. I love cover two. This year, cover two to me is the better coverage, and I probably shouldn't be running set of cover two a lot, lo a lot sooner. So that's the play I'm going to show you guys today. The cover two on the defensive side, we're going to go three different levels here. We're going to just pick multiple different plays. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to pick the level sail to start. Then I'm going to pick the PA crossers where I'm going to block the running back. Then I'm going to pick a third play where, you know, I'm just going to continuously add to the blocking to the point where you can see this play is still going to be successful so let's go let's pick the level sale just to show you a lot of people run plays where there's no blocking back now as far as this defense goes like i said there's there's multiple ways to run this i'm going to show you the way that i've been doing it up to a year uh it might be a little bit of a longer setup but to me it's a little bit more consistent when it comes to run plays especially uh because there's not as much gaps uh but it's a really good pressure package so without a doubt easiest way to do this play i'm going to do my 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 wide triangle to bring up my coverage adjustments then i'm going to base align and then i'm going to do it again base align and show blitz uh, and that brings all the, uh, the, the the defenders down I can also uh, show blitz again to back these guys off uh, which I think is just fine because ultimately I find that hard flatting with a blitz like this is going to make the most sense so this is pretty much going to be the base then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my d-pad to the left and down to pinch that defensive line then I'm going to go the opposite direction d-pad and the, to the right and down to uh, basically blitz all my linebackers. Then the last thing I'm gonna do is D-pad to left and up to slant outside. I will have a setup in the description because I know that's a lot. Now there, I didn't even get to do everything, but you can see this, I wasn't even paying attention. I didn't even do the full setup right, and I still got the sack. Obviously, I mean, there's only five blockers, so that plays a big part. But let's go to the replay, because like I said, I didn't even do everything I was supposed to be doing, but you could see the alignment. The fact that I'm hard flying, the fact that these safeties are playing a little bit closer to the box than normal, it's going to make it to the point where they get involved in early routes maybe a little bit sooner than normal but ultimately I did hard flat so even though these guys are backed off they will play down to the point where they're gonna get in the way of the uh, the, the, the short check and releases now as far as the, the the blitz goes like I said I want to typically be down over the center but you can see once again we have an additional additional guy sprinting in so nobody's gonna really get open in the amount of time needed so basically it's a six on five which is pretty obvious but the purpose of this and me showing this in the replay is ultimately this alignment this spread this angle is why these guys will basically sprint in past anybody uh, as you can see it's just they're just going to take a an instant path to the quarterback that's something that i feel that my setup gives that the, maybe the the pro setup doesn't necessarily give so first we'll do it with a play action running back which will be the pa crossers it's the exact same setup although i already kind of messed it up but boom we got it right there like i said we're just going to basically pinch the defensive line and slant them out then we're just going to blitz all and guess pass i didn't really mention there uh so it's a really quick setup it's really not that long if you're used to doing it like i said i've been doing it for over a year i could do it with a blindfold on so then i really have two options now, number one this is a play action play so the running back is going to stay in and block but i find that the best way to get pressure on a play like this and the majority of these plays is going to be taking this guy here whoever's over the running back and bring him in. This is going to be my user. I bring him into the line because I want this offensive line to shift in my direction. So basically, the path to the around the running back is going to be quickest from this defensive end, the op the guy opposite the running back, because the play axe is basically going to take him out of the play. And me being on this side basically gives me the opportunity to basically just drop back right away or cover the running back if I want to, you know, if I hard flat or whatever I want to do. Whatever I decide to do, this gives me an option to basically be the center of the field or to be, um, you know, like I said, take away the running back or whoever. So I'm going to stay over this tackle for just a second, then basically drop back and you can see the guy just gets in free, which is something that I put out in my previous schemes. Now I can get heat off of both sides it really just depends on you know what I decide to do as far as who I decide to use her so we're gonna do our setup one more time and then I'm just gonna bring this guy down this time I'll bring him down over the center and you're gonna see both sides are gonna come off off the off the edge on both sides so you can see the running back doesn't have a shot I mean that's just like stealing so we're going to pick that play again now I'm gonna pick a play where uh, I have um, you know, at least a running back blocking with no play action at all. I want no play action. It's like right here, the inside cross. So we're going to have a six on six now. As you can see, that's my setup. I mean, that's how quick it takes me to do it. That was like a half a second. I didn't really, I know, I, like I said, I've been doing this a long time. It might, and for people that are watching, if you've been doing this since last year with me, then you definitely have, uh, you know, an advantage. You should be able to get that set up in pretty quick. But like I said, there's a couple different ways I can do it. Come down right over the center, basically just, you know, hold this center for a second sometimes i can do it long enough to hold the running back you can see boom we just have guy flying off the edge even the running back blocking he ended up blocking nobody now this is also something that i saw in another breakdown where essentially uh lining up just to the left 
of the center can help. And I think that in this particular instance, it helped to keep the running back forward because I think that they he thought I was going to A-gap. But ultimately, that's really an important part of this when getting uh, the pressure off the opposite side of the running back is you do have to basically come down to this gap. And like I said, I don't have to engage, but I basically just have to you know hold that spot for a, for long enough for a blocker to, to, to notice me. So we'll go and do that again. Like I said, I really just set up I said, most important part is definitely guessing blitz and definitely zoning all, which I didn't even do there. But like I said, for whatever reason, I, I hear that it helps to have your arrow pointing on the opposite end of the tight end. And I'll go ahead and I'll do it the other way and we'll see what happens. Like I said, this here, let's see if we get the, the blitzer off the other side. As you can see, it didn't really matter. We get the same blitzer off the same edge. So that's something which I'm not 100% sure, sure if it matters. Like I said, it's nothing that I ever really messed with before. But we have a six on six. Just got to make sure we get everybody in the position here. And we have a very easy play. Like I said, I got to come down right into this guy. You can see he's still peeling off. And we're still getting a free runner pretty much every single time. So very easy blitz to set up. And like I said, it's the same as the blitz that I showed. I showed a blitz earlier, a version of this earlier this year. And I showed it last year. It's the exact same setup. But ultimately, I feel like the cover two is probably a much better coverage. Now, one of the things that I like about my setup that I think... Uh, I'm not sure if you can do this out of the pro setup, but you can actually shoot a lot of gaps when it comes to run plays. So let's go ahead and let's pick that play one more time. We're going to go ahead. We're just going to go, I guess we'll just go with an inside zone um, because that's probably the most common. So we'll pick that. So really easy setup, at least for me. I know a lot of people are probably going to struggle with this at first, but you can shoot gaps with this, which is basically just stand back right at about the position to get you. And then you can see how I can basically just run across and take people out. So basically, that's one of the reasons that I like this setup. A lot of people don't know that you can, uh, you know, I don't know if you can do that with the pro setup. I know I can do it with this setup. I just don't get too close to the line. And then basically, just boom, just get right inside and you can take out run plays, especially popular run plays like the inside zone. So like I said, that's pretty much my setups and how I've been using it. I'm going to show you guys the pro setup because, like I said, that's something that, you know, that's kind of the purpose of me doing this video in the first place is because I noticed a lot of pros are using this play. So let's go and let's pick that. So my understanding of how the pro players are doing this is they're basically uh, shifting their defense towards the tight end. Only You only have to do that, apparently, if there's a tight end on the field. I don't have to do that otherwise. But typically, that's something that you, you don't necessarily have to do. The rest of the steps are pretty much the same. That's the only defensive line shift that they make. But as far as blitzing all the linebackers, as far as slanting your defensive line outside, these things are all parts that I showed. Guessing pass obviously helps. And then bringing this guy down over the center is also important. I did see a video where a guy even went as far as to say that where this arrow points is important, which I'm not 100% sure is true or not. But ultimately, that's really the only difference. Now, when I look at this, I see a little bit of opportunity when it comes to run gaps. As you see there, I actually get sucked in. And the blitz got picked up. So like I said, that's not my setup uh maybe there's a step that i didn't necessarily get but ultimately you can see how you know to me like i said this is something that uh i've been running uh, a different way for a very long time i don't want to say that my way is the right way uh, or anything like that but i'm just showing you how i saw it be run from a, a more of a pro perspective and you know this is something where maybe i just have to pull this guard a little or this center a little bit better so let's go and let's do that again like i said i'm coming down the gap a little bit more you can see we definitely got a free rusher there uh as he gets it off to the drag pretty quickly so let me know in the comment section which setup works better for you guys the pro setup or my setup my setup's a little bit longer so for a lot of you guys maybe the shorter setup will be better uh, i'm just curious to know because like i said i've been running this for a very long time let me know in the comment section give me a little feedback i'm gonna end the video there though if you guys want to see a full scheme out of this particular uh series of plays this particular defense hit the like button let me know in the comment section i'll make sure to put that out at a later date other than that thanks for watching man wish it out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bids and more link in the description below